Okay. So if you want to follow along, you can log on. Um, P14-32A. It's a little bit of a review as well. Did they give you a? Yes. Okay. Um, because it looks like we're going to have to do a couple things before we get to the statement of cash flow. Okay, so it says, what is the purpose of the statement of cash flow? The purpose of the statement of cash flow is, well, it's not to report financial position. What financial statement reports financial position? That would be your, your balance sheet, right? <coughs> um, then the statement that reports the results of operations is your income statement. And that income statement also shows how net income is calculated. So I'm kind of using a process of elimination here. Um, I like the fourth one now. And I can solidify that by looking at the fifth one and, and noticing that that's the retainer earning statement. The last one is, right? So it looks like it's going to be the fourth one to show where cash came from and where cash was spent. We got a nice work on that. So we're supposed to take the data here and figure out what, a inco what, what the income statement would be, okay? So we got a bunch of data and it's not really um, straightforward stuff. You kind of have to do a little bit of thinking on these. So let's see. On January 1, 2015, so that's the issuance of common stock. That has nothing to do with the income statement. And then these following cash payments, okay, they're really balance sheet effects, right? You're, you're either buying assets or paying down, buying inventory in this case, uh, here's one, rent expense. So we got rent expense of 11000 So I'll come over here and I'm going to take rent expense and stick it into my expense category on my income statement. Okay. Now it says later in the year, ORRC purchased merchandise inventory on account for 244000 Before year end, ORRC paid 164000 so that's technically a balance sheet transaction. So we're not going to look at that one. Let's see. During 2015, ORRC sold 2,200 units of merchandise inventory for $325 each. That sounds like revenue to me. Okay. That's basically if I sold 2,200 units at 325 each. From that particular sale, I have 715,000 in revenue. Okay, that was item D, first sentence in item D. So that's my revenue. Now the rest of the the next sentence really has to do with the collection. That doesn't have anything to do with what's revenue. Um, But the third sentence in item D, cost of goods sold for the year was 280000 That's an expense. So we can say cost of goods sold, 280000 Okay. And for now, I'll put that 1000 or 715000 up there as revenue, sales revenue. So E is pretty straightforward. It says the, the store employs three people and the combined annual payroll is 90,000. So 90,000 is going to be salaries and wages expense. Okay. Then it says at the end of the year, ORRC paid income tax of 18,000. And they paid it all, so there's no income tax payable. So that's my income tax expense. 
They pay dividends of 44000 but dividends go on the retained earnings statement. They don't go on the income statement. They're not an expense. And then there's depreciation. So we got to think about this, right? It says, for store fixtures, ORRC uses the straight line depreciation method over five years with no residual value. So basically, we're going to take the store fixture value and divide it by five years. So let's see. It looks like they bought store fixtures of 49,000. And they're not telling us about any other store fixtures that they might have had. So I think we're safe in assuming that that's the only store fixtures they have, 49,000. And they depreciated over five years. So I'm going to divide by five. So that's 9,800 in depreciation expense per year. And we'll know whether we're right or not when we plug this in. So let's add up the expenses. 11,000, 280,000, 90,000. So I got total expenses of 408,800. And if I subtract that from net income, I mean from revenue, I get 300 and got to take that minus sign off of it here. 306,200. Oops. So we got it right. So they give you a whole bunch of information, but only some of it is pertinent to the income statement. So just be careful when you're selecting that stuff. Now let's see. The next thing we're going to do is the balance sheet. But what you might want to do is take a look at this first sentence up here. It says, Official reserve rare coins was formed on January 1, 2015. So this is a brand new company as of this year. It's only one year old. So it does not have beginning retained earnings. It, it's not going to have beginning retained earnings. So when we prepare our balance sheet, we need to figure out what retained earnings are. Let's see. So I'm going to I'm going to give you that formula again, right? When you do retain earnings, you take the beginning retain earnings, you add net income, and you subtract dividends. And that gives you the ending retain earnings. That's what we need to get to. We need to get to the ending retain earnings. So the company didn't have any beginning retain earnings, zero, right? We just figured out what net income is. Net income was 306,200. Okay? And then we'll scan through our data sheet here. And I think they may have mentioned the dividend. Yeah, item G. They paid 44,000 in dividends. Right here. See right here G 44,000. So that's what we're going to subtract. 44,000. So if we do that math, we got an ending retained earnings balance of 262,200. So that, that's got to go over here into stockholders' equity, 262200 Okay? Now we can go back through it, right? Starting with item A. <coughs> if they issued 525000 in common stock, that will be the common stock balance in stockholders' equity. I got it right from there. And it looks like they didn't issue any more stock. So that's going to be the, the balance, right? Then we can add that up to get our total stockholders' equity. Okay. 
Now let's go to item B. Early in January, they made the following cash payments. <coughs> so they bought store fixtures. So we now have store fixtures of 49,000. They purchased inventory but they ended up buying more inventory in item C. You see that? So they bought 270,000 in inventory, then they bought 244 more. Okay. So that one, I might make a T account. might scribble a T account on my on my paper somewhere and then I can figure it out right I can say inventory or you can tally it somehow they bought 270 on account and then from item C they purchased another 244 okay, and then it says in item D they sold 2,200 2, units and this is what you want to look at it says cost of goods sold was 280,000 so that's what's coming out of inventory now my eyeballs just noticed that they're giving us the ending inventory balance there anyway, but we can we can double check and see if we get the same thing. So if you add these two and you subtract the credit, 234,000. So they're, they're actually telling it to us right here. If we had read a little better, then we would have caught that. But we're still re recomputing it correctly, okay? So we're gonna put that in the asset section. I'm going to have inventory here, 234,000. Okay. okay, let's see what else we got. What you could do is you could track the cash, though. You could be keeping track of cash as you go along. So you could say cash. Right? And go back to A. When we issued common stock, we brought in 525,000 in cash. And then it says we made the following payments. So we paid 49,000 for store fixtures, uh, 270,000 for inventory, 11,000 for rent expense. Okay. And then it says later in the year they purchased merchandise inventory on account for 244,000. So that would be an account payable. AP. So it went up to 244. Okay. But it's telling my telling me that we paid off 164. So that's the payment of AP. Okay, the other thing they did is they had accounts receivable. Okay, so it says that they sold 325,000 
which we already computed, 325, I'm sorry, they sold 2,200 at $325 each. And then it says, by the year, by year end, the com company collected 85% of this amount. So we can plug that in here. We can say we collected 85%. I'm just multiplying the 715,000 by 85% of the counts receivable. We also have to show that number decreasing over here to get the right accounts receivable balance. Okay. Hold on now. Let's see. Okay. You're going to have a salary and wage payable because. Did you do the last step? The last step I did? Yeah. Okay. I, I read D. Right? It says they sold 2,220 units at 325 each. So that's how I come up with the 715,000 because it's 2,200 2, times 325. Okay. Now, it says before year end, the company collected 85%. So what they're saying is they collected 85% of that 715,000. So all I did was, I'll do it again. I said equals... 750,000 times 85%. Okay. Now that's the same number that will decrease the AR, the accounts receivable. So that 607,000, that's the same, that's the debit and credit that's going to happen, right? You're going to debit cash to show the collection and credit accounts receivable to show that your customer no, no longer owes you that. Okay? Now, it's saying this one's straightforward. You don't really have to. Uh, well, you need to know what cash was collected, right? So you can say, I'll borrow this. You can say salary and wages payable, okay, so it says the annual payroll is 90000 right? And then it says at year end, they still owe 4000 okay, so we know that that's going to be the salary and wage payable balance. How much did they pay off? Well, it's the 90000 Minus 4,000, 86,000, right? So you got to show that coming out of cash as well. So you got to show a credit in cash. That's the payment of salaries. Then we'll go down. At the end of the end of the year, they paid income tax. So that's a straight payment. They didn't have any payable. So that's income tax. And they pay dividends. Okay. And that's it. That sounds like that's all the cash payments that were made. So we can figure out what the cash balance should be if we add up the debits and then subtract the total of the the credits from that total debit amount. So I'm going to add up my debits, and I'm going to subtract the sum of my credits. Okay. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to say cash. Four hundred ninety thousand seven fifty. I'm going to say accounts receivable, which I need to figure the balance out for. 
it'll be the 715,000 minus 600,000. Then we have to add them. Oops. So I'll add up my current assets. Okay, now. Remember, we had depreciation expense, but since this is a brand new company, there wouldn't have been any accumulated depreciation prior to this year. So the accumulated depreciation is going to be the same as the depreciation expense. Excuse me. So we got 40,200 net effect, right? If I subtract the accumulated depreciation from the fixtures themselves. Then we'll add the current assets and the long-term assets. So let's see, 80, can't line my eyes up, 87,200. Eight hundred seventy-two thousand two hundred. Okay. Then I think it's just a matter of putting in these current liabilities. So we're going to have accounts payable and salaries and wages payable. So my accounts payable will be. eighty thousand balance. Salaries and wages is four thousand. So we got eighty four thousand. Okay. Then we need to add add the two, right? So we're gonna have let's see eight seven I'll just add it here. Oh, we're off. I'm missing one thing, I think, right? Or did I not add this right? this here. Okay, let's see now. <coughs> Where did you find the accumulated depreciation? Oh, well, it's a brand new company, right? Uh -huh. So there wouldn't have been any accumulated depreciation prior to this year, okay. it's, so it's the same as the depreciation expense. Uh, okay. Let's see how we did. Oh, we did well. We got it. So I guess with this problem, you probably want to have this, at least have this cash T account running so you can get your cash balance, right? Okay. Now they want me to prepare the statement of cash flow. Okay, so in a indirect method statement of cash flow, we start with net income. So I'll get that from my income statement, 306,200. Okay. And then we make some adjustments, 
right? So we're going to add back the depreciation expense. If you remember from that cheat sheet I gave you, right? Depreciation expense was nine thousand. Oops. Nine thousand eight hundred. Then we gotta we gotta think about how things change, right? So let's see. We will everything increased, okay? Because there's zero at the beginning of the year if you think about that. So we're gonna look at everything as an increase. When current assets increase, we subtract. So I'm gonna have to subtract one hundred seven thousand two fifty and 234,000, okay? So let's see. Oops. So we're gonna subtract the increase in the receivable and we're gonna subtract the increase in inventory. Okay. So we just gotta look at that. 107, 250, and 234. Now with current liabilities, when current liabilities increase, we add that back. So we got accounts payable and salaries payable. We're going to add those amounts back. So 80,000 and 4,000. Now I probably want to show these here as negative. we can think of anything else but I don't think there's anything else there's no gains or losses so we can make a subtotal of this stuff I'll just start 98 minus okay, so we're gonna have a negative oh did I clear that thing Okay, hold on. Okay. I I disposed of my number. Okay, so a negative two forty seven four fifty. And I'm going to subtract that from my net income. So I got a positive 58,750. That's the operating section, right? That's what we were planning to tackle this week, operating section. So you notice I, I have the rules memorized. I know when to add something and when to subtract it. That's what you got to take care of. You got to make sure you got that down. I put it in that spreadsheet that we put in resources. So make sure you can <coughs> identify what you have to add and subtract. Okay. Now we will go to investing activities. And let's see. The only long-term asset is that store fixture, and that was bought with cash, 49000 So that's a cash outflow, right? Cash payment for the acquisition of store fixtures. And we said that was negative 49. That means the cash went out. We bought it with 49000 in cash. So and then in the financing section, a <coughs> couple things going on. 
we got the issuance of common stock, so that's cash coming in. Cash receipt from the issuance of common stock. Okay. And then we have a dividend. 44,000, that's a payment. Payment of dividend. And we'll use that. We'll calculate question. Oh no. No. Okay? So I got the three sections. I got operating, investing and financing. So the combination of those three things will give me my net, my change in cash. So, oops, start over. Okay, so it was a brand new company. We had zero to start. And at the end, we should have 490750 It sounds familiar because I remember that in my T account. But let's make sure that's what we're showing up here on the balance sheet. See, that's the ending cash balance. So the whole thing reconciles. You see what I did? It reconciles all the way down. From net income all the way down, we end up with the balance sheet's cash balance. Okay. Any questions on that? Oh, four, 490750 So it's all together. Um, well, you take your operating, the increase in operating, and then I'm subtracting the decrease in investing from that, and then I'm adding back the increase in financing. And it should, that's, that's what should check out with your, um, that should check out with your cash balance once you've done that, right? If you add that increase to the beginning balance, and in our case, the beginning balance is zero because it's a brand new company, 